All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday evening screencast video coaching call. My name is Lon Naylor. I'll be your host tonight. Color tint gradients in Camtasia 2020. It comes to us from a guy named Joe Dearman, and I think he's one of my fellow 2020 beta testers. He was in the group. A lot of good ideas thrown around in that place, I'll tell you that right now. Mr. Deerman here is one of those creative dudes, and this was just a piece of awesomeness. Sweet! So I thought I would kind of show you guys what it is that he's talking about, and a really, really pretty neat effect. So here's a way to create some really interesting background gradients that we can use in a couple of different ways, and we'll touch on those in just a minute. But here I just have a project, and this one happens to be set for 1080p. For this particular trick, you might even want to bump this up to 4K. You'll get a little higher resolution version, but I'm going to just kind of stick with regular 1080p, and let's go to annotations. Let's go to shapes, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Oh, let's see, I'll go to bold, and we'll just drop a shape on the canvas, stretch it out. Let's set the color of this to black. All right, I want this to be black. And then, if you didn't know this, you can, for shapes and callouts and things like that, you can... If we look at the fill here, you'll notice that it's solid, but you can change it to a gradient. So let's do that, and okay, well, there's kind of a gradient looking thing, but the deal is that you can't really do much with it. You can't adjust the levels. It doesn't really have any flexibility to it. <laughs> so that's kind of the scoop there. Okay looking gradient, but let's kind of work on this a little bit in 2020 and see what we can do. So first thing, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to kind of bring this down, right, to something almost double what it normally would be. Okay, and let's go to fit. Next, I'm going to go to my visual effects and we're going to add a color adjustment. Let's just drag that out on there. Okay, and I'm also going to blow the brightness all the way out, right? So the goal here, and what I'm looking to do, and you'll see why in just a minute, is I want a object here, a shape with a sort of gradient looking deal to it, that is as light, read that as white, at the top, and as dark, read that as black, at the bottom. And that's kind of why I adjusted, you know, pulled it down a little bit to make it stretch it out bigger. Because you can see now that, well, I kind of have a havesy havesy type of a thing here, right? And by taking the brightness all the way up, I get as much separation of light and dark as possible. That's kind of the key. That's very, very important here. The reason that's important is. Let's go back to our visual effects and let's add one of the new ones from Camtasia 2020 called the color tint. So I'm just going to drop that on top of that. So when we do that, let's scroll down and kind of look at the properties here. What you'll notice is that color tint adds a specific color to light areas. Okay, that's why I wanted white up here and then dark areas. So it looks at the image, determines what's light and what's dark, and then swaps those colors out with whichever ones you decide to pick here. We'll play around with this in just a minute. Now, the gradient effect, let's zoom this into 100%, and hopefully you can kind of see this on the webinar. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? Is there anything there that just, eh, I don't know. You'll notice that it has like these lines through it. This is called banding. Yeah, faint lines, okay? So let's apply just a little, oh, a little fix trick here. I'm gonna go back to annotations. 
Let's go to our special annotations here and I'll zoom to fit again. Let's drop us a blur call out on top of this guy. And I'm just going to use the standard blur. For the blur call out, I always make it bigger if I want to cover the entire screen bigger than the canvas. Otherwise, sometimes you end up with, you know, little unblurred remnants along the edge here. Okay, so this is just a standard blur. I haven't made any adjustments or anything, but now let's zoom in to 100% again, and you'll see that it is much smoother. In fact, I guess we could do this. Let's take the blur call out. Let's move it off. No blur. Ew, icky banding. And blur smooths it out, just like butter. Okay, so let's go to fit again. Right. Let's click on the shape. We got a gradient. It's not necessarily all that cool, but watch what happens when we go down to the color tint properties. And I'm just going to blow the intensity out. And watch what happens. See how nice and smooth that gets? It's almost like a duotone kind of a color scheme. And these kinds of gradients are very clean and very popular right now aren't they? So you can play around with this and again change the light that which once was white to something else and this is just a lovely just a lovely subtle kind of a thing and of course you can get pretty much as crazy as you want with it you know and let's see what else can we do I'm gonna go ahead and reset those and I'm gonna go ahead and group these two items so I got my blur I got my underlying shape. Let's group them. And I could call this, let's rename it, Gradient Background. And of course, add that to my library. Right click, Add to Library. And now, anytime I want a nice, smooth gradient background, all I got to do is drop that guy in. All right, now you can also kind of play with some stuff. Let's zoom out a little bit and make a few adjustments. So let's see here. If I stretch this out like this, you notice that it kind of changes where the gradient appears. Okay, so I can get a very high degree of customization. Maybe I want it, you know, to be a gradient from side to side and all that good kind of stuff. Let's zoom that in again a little, or zoom that out again. In fact, I'm going to just kind of make this a little bit bigger and adjust it around. Again, changing the direction of the color and the, and the gradient. Of course, another thing we could do then is animate this. So let's go back to fit on our shape here. I'm going to lengthen this out a little bit maybe like 10 seconds or something. We'll dive in a little bit here and we'll put a custom keyframe or a custom animation. Let's go to animations and add us a custom animation to the selected media. Stretch this guy out and let's see, I'm going to reset this to zero to start and then at the end here uh, let's just do a kind of a, a small one, just like kick it 90 degrees, for, say. And then make it last the length. Let's see what that looks like. So it's a, with the length that I have here, it's just a very subtle kind of a change. Uh, let's, let's make it a little more. Let's try something like 180. Okay, and then <laughs> that, see that's a, that's a bit much, but you kind of get the idea. So you can have uh, kind of a ball with that and just play with different stuff. What happens if you rotate the shape 45 degrees? Uh, let's take a look here. Okay, so I'm currently at zero. I'll drop a keyframe. Let's just rotate it 45. 
Now again, keep in mind you have to, since I'm in a widescreen format here, you have to make sure you have enough room, you know, otherwise it's going to cut off corners and stuff, but so you can kind of see the shape moving there. That's kind of nice and subtle. And then just to kind of finish it off, what else can we do? Of course, we can uh, add us a restore keyframe a little further down the line, which is going to kind of reverse it. And take it back. Oh, so pretty. I love it. Hey, Lon Naylor here. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions and comments below. I answer all of them personally. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.